Hey, what's up guys? Tuki here, back again with another episode of my New Jersey Devils Franchise Mode Series. That's weird to say, but it is new! My new New Jersey Devils Franchise Mode Series right here on NHL 19, the final Franchise Mode for NHL 19, and hopefully we get to end things with a bang. Season 2 begins right here. And right now, of course, we sim through that first season knowing that our roster was pretty much set for this second season. It was just a matter of how the draft was going to play out. Of course, we did not end up with Jack Hughes. We end up with Moritz Sider, which is fine by me. However, the one thing looming overhead, not only over, you know, not only over the New Jersey Devils in real life, but in this franchise mode, is what is going to happen with Taylor Hall, and that is the big question. The moves the Devils have made this past offseason, getting Gusev, getting Simmons, and trying to make sure that they can convince Taylor Hall that, yeah, hey, if you stay here, you might be able to win. We're affected by that as well, because he is not currently under contract, of course, beyond this year, and I think what we're going to do is wait to see how this year goes down for us, and then maybe think about like well if we're clearly not that competitive treating it in a realistic way maybe moving him at the deadline and seeing what we can get in return which I'm sure would be a fairly solid return but obviously it would set us back quite a ways there are not as many 90 overall players I believe at least in terms of what I have for the rosters right now in terms of the way that I've set it up compared to what EA has so having a player the caliber of Taylor Hall is a big time difference maker for us and losing him even though we'd get a return for him would absolutely suck so let's hope that's not the case let's hope we're doing well in theory we should because we nearly made the playoffs last year and probably would have had it not been due to injuries to certain players down the stretch mainly Corey Schneider between the pipes so we'll see how we do this season, and good God, that's a perfect start, isn't it? He's out for a little bit over a week, but Taylor Hall gets hurt, and Mackenzie Blackwood gets hurt. <laughs> oh boy, here we go, right? Here we go. Oh God, let's call up Sen, because he's a healthy scratch, as it is. What an absolute nightmare. We lowered the injury slider, too, in the last episode, the first episode, so that's... That's pretty rough. Let's see what Corey Schneider can do for us, huh? Down to a 76. And he actually, I, I think he might have gotten, did he get us that one against Montreal? He did get us the win against the Leafs, 6-5 to five in overtime. And Blackwood is back to 100%. I'm going to have to send Sen down. Otherwise, we're going to get the prompt. Like, oh, hey, the other guy's healthy. You have too many people. So, Sen to the minors with you. No waivers. Not that I'd be too worried about losing him anyway with the two Russian goaltenders that we now have, which, admittedly, we're going to hold on to them. Fair game. It's not like they were uh, players that should have been dropped by the AI. They were guys who were up for grabs in the 2019 draft who didn't get selected, funny enough. So the other teams done goofed. They done botched it. And we'll take advantage of that as Taylor Hall is back. Thank God. Because that means Brett Senny was on the top line. But he did have three assists in four games. Not that bad of a healthy scratch option. Hall, though, had five points in three games. I'm excited to see what that top line can do in general, but especially Nikita Gusev, or not Nikita, well, eh, Nikita Gusev too. The top line in general, I'm excited to see what they can do. Nico Hischer, I think, is the interesting part, because obviously the Hughes-Hischer combination would be amazing. My God, the injuries. The Hughes-Hischer combination would have been amazing. Wow, the Florida Panthers suck. And unfortunately, we, we don't get to see just how good they're going to be. Um, but at the very least, Nico Hischer's turned into a half-decent option. I'm going to go best lines for now, and we'll figure it out once this team's at 100% health for the first time this season. Four wins through 12 games. Not exactly ideal in terms of being on a playoff pace. You could blame the injuries if you wanted to. But all in all, I still think it's a case of us underperforming thus far. A couple of losses in a row. We snap that streak against the Arizona Coyotes and then botch a game against Minnesota and lose in a shootout. At this point, though, every pity point is going to count as we nearly, 
nearly had more wins than regulation losses, and that went away. It went away. So nine, nine, and three. We'll take a look at some things here as of December first, mainly the playoff picture because I've been looking at the records for other teams, and we might not be that far out of it, but if Will Butcher wants to be hurt for a week, that is going to be fairly detrimental. And, in you know, and I did forget to mention something at the top of this, I do suppose. In theory, the Taylor Hall contract is the biggest thing we have to worry about. We do have, and I'm actually be intrigued to see if certain players were signed. It's the one thing I didn't check early on. Uh, we'll have to check. I think, again, it was Point and Rantanen who are still there. We have a couple of contracts to worry about. And indeed, all the RFAs would have been off the board. Let's see if they would have signed recently, and if not, we'll double-check their teams to see if they sign. But we do have some other, other teams that we have to worry about, or other players that we have to worry about on the team, and teams we have to worry about too, because San Jose has won 10 games in a row. Signing-wise, nothing, so it makes me wonder if Rantanen and Braden Point, of course, the Mitch Marner debacle, me completely forgetting about him resigning last episode, was embarrassing enough. But for the Avs, no, Rantanen's still on the block. Miko Rantanen's going to sit out the entire year. Here's the thing, even if we didn't have Gerard's deal starting a year early, they wouldn't have really had the money to sign. I mean, I mean maybe they would have, but he was already higher rated than Marner was. Marner accepted the eight. Would $10 million have been enough to get Rantanen under contract? I don't know. I really don't think it was just the Gerard contract that screwed them over. But uh, it certainly didn't help. And we were also going to check the Tampa Bay Lightning and Braden Point, who was also sitting out the entire year. A little bit less surprising that the Lightning did not have the money to pull that off. Even with the Vasilevsky contract having to start a year early... It, one of them, they would have been in trouble regardless, and that's not all that surprising. We knew the Lightning were going to have issues trying to build the team. That's why I said in the first episode I wanted to wait and see uh, mainly if Braden Point was going to sign before early August. He hasn't yet, and that kind of sucks. But to take a look at the players on expiring deals, well, we have to sign Nico Hischer. We have to sign Brat. We have to sign Vatanen. Simmons, probably not. But it's, it's a little bit rough. And then goaltending-wise as well, Mackenzie Blackwood is going to have to be re-signed. He's not going to be that expensive. In terms of re-signing Sammy Votnin, I, I think it's necessary. I was taking a look at the pending free agents. We're not really going to have that many options. i I got to admit here. Sergachev's an RFA. Petra Angelo Schultz might be available. But I'd rather just take my chances in re-signing Votnin than hoping that someone who's one overall point better is available in free agency because at least we'll have uh, the negotiating rights, of course, for Vatanen. So we beat the Rangers 8-4. to four. I didn't even point that out. Taylor Hall has 43 points in 22 games. Good Lord. And as it stands, we are currently in a playoff spot. Just five points back of Pittsburgh for first in the Metro, although they have that game at hand. So we will move onward here. We do have two games this month against Pittsburgh, both that could be... Very, very crucial for the end of season standings. Pete K. Subban goes down to injury for about two weeks. And despite the lowered slider, we are not having much luck. We will actually take a look at the central scouting rankings. I was taking a look at this too. It is the Lafreniere draft, but there is this guy, Keegan Valesi, the Hungarian franchise power forward. Hell of a time for a franchise player to show up in the Lafreniere draft. There's also Pensik, who of course is generated. Colton Godfrey, computer generated. But then you have the real world players Lucas Raymond, Anton Lindell, Quentin Byfield, Alex Holtz, uh, Matthew Beniers, I guess it would be. Benier, perhaps, uh, who is a real player. Tim Stutzel, everyone's favorite. Noel Gundler's there. Justin Bear, and of course, we've bumped up the people that needed to be bumped up. Added in some players like Tyler Clevin, who is not an enforcer, so don't get your hopes up. Simon Tevall there. Dylan Peterson, you know, some faces of series pasts. Uh, yeah, series passed that, uh, you know, featured featured quite heavily. But we'll see what happens with the draft, of course, how big of a draft that ultimately is for us. Depends on whether or not we can start winning some more games. Good Lord, the injuries. Damon Severson goes down. I'm amazed that we're one game under... Okay, this is ridiculous. And granted, that's an AHL injury. 
And PK has been re-injured. <laughs> This is unreal, the fact that we're still winning games as we lose to L.A. Because I said that, but the fact that we're still winning games despite all of these injuries. We're 17-17 and 17 on the year. Make that 18-17 and 17 total, of course, if you combine the losses. As John Hayden goes down to injury as well. PK comes back, though, and we beat the Highlanders. Nothing but injuries. Good Lord. But we have a winning record here, which is shocking. 21-14-3 after four straight wins. I think that's five now as we welcome you to January 1st of 2020. The distant future. 22-14-3 on the season. The Devils might be in the top three. Might be second in the Metro Division. But you can see just how close it is. Just five points out from being in sixth. The Rangers and Canes. Falling out of the running a little bit, but we are doing very well. Taylor Hall is absolutely killing it right now, which you just love to see. I mean, 62 points in 35 games is one of the best point paces I have ever seen. Just ridiculous from him. Nico Hischer up to 50 points on the year, and Gusev has 34 goals in 39 games because that's just what Nikita Gusev does with the goal-scoring ability he has and the ability to put up points that created players have in general, Brat up to 30 points in 38 games. Zajac still hanging in there. Not exactly the ideal second line center at this point, but he's doing okay. Palmieri also doing all right. Miles Wood, it's not too bad for a third liner. A little bit behind the pace we'd want. McLeod, 22 points, pretty damn good. Wayne Simmons, 15 points on the year, which is all right. The fourth line, it's been a little bit quiet. Zaka has three points in 18 games. Coleman, 8 points in 39, and Joey Anderson's in right now due to the litany of injuries that we have. John Hayden currently out. Brett Senny looking like he's good to go. And, of course, Andy Green, 14 games, 1 point for the captain, Andy Green. <laughs> ah, New Jersey. That, that was one of those, like, really, that's, that's going to be your captain kind of players? No disrespect to Andy Green, I'm just saying. A lot of teams like to go for star power. That the Devils didn't go for star power on that one. So, in terms of anything happening around the league, still no picks, of course, or trading. Why would there be picks? I'm surprised that's the same category. Still no trades. We will move on to the early stages of February, and we'll take a look yet again at whether or not any moves have gone down, where we are in the standings, and what the situation is with Taylor Hall. I mean, I think as long as we have a winning record and the player says, yeah, I want to I want to come back, I think we'll go for him. If not, we'll explore potentially trading him, which would be a nightmare about time the player, you know, in-game says, no, nah, I don't really want to come back, despite the fact that I'm on a 100-point pace, the team's winning, but it wouldn't be the first time that that's happened, right? So we'll see how it goes down. Back-to-back -back losses for the first time. In a while, we bounce back with an 8-2-3 victory over the Islanders and John Hayden. Back to 100%, so nearly to 30 wins. A 7-4 loss to Ottawa, though, is a little bit devastating. I'm intrigued to see, actually, what some of these teams look like. Of course, we might still take a look either at the end of this season to see how teams are shaping up or maybe the beginning of next season after, you know, younger guys have had a chance to develop and the AIs had a chance to put a little bit of their own spin on their teams. We are still dealing with so many injuries, but still winning regardless. 29, 16, and 5. As of February 1st, we are currently just two points behind Pittsburgh. If we win, we will be even in points. I think in terms of ROW, they would still be ahead, but very much in a playoff spot. I mean, five points ahead of the Flyers. It's still close, but we are right in the mix with where we want to be. Nikita Gusev, 77 points through 50 games, 45 goals for him. He is going to break 60. There is no denying that at this point. And we'll take a look at whether or not anything's happened. And indeed, we have a trade. Antoine Morand and a fifth going to Ottawa for a second, a third, and Mark Borowiecki. <laughs> I don't know if I'd give up Antoine Morand for a second and a third. Borowiecki had to be traded basically straight up for the fifth. But Antoine Morand to Ottawa. A questionable trade 
from the Anaheim Ducks at this point. I don't think I'd give up on Morand. They did, and I'm sure they'll regret it. Now, let's take a look at the Taylor Hall situation, because he wants to re-sign, which is beautiful. If he didn't, I'd want to add him to the block. Let's take a look. Whew, that is, that is some money. That, that is some money. So, you're 20, you're 28. Say we give you, now I have been burned before by giving Taylor Hall an eight-year contract. It has happened before. But, man, I would, uh, I'd love to be able to re-sign him here. He wants that five-year deal, which I don't blame him. In a real perspective, you know, in a real world view, that'd be like, okay, I'm approaching my mid-30s, the team hasn't won, I want out, I want to go somewhere else. So I don't totally hate that. The question is, now, when players want to re-sign, but they're UFAs, they don't typically take less. But if he'd take, oh god, 11-5, and then what does Nico want? Nico wants 7. Right. And the more years added, the more money he wants. Of course. And how much does Brat want? Only wants five. Oh boy, money wise, this is this is gonna be a little bit rough, I think. It's gonna be a little bit rough. I think if we re-sign our top three forwards, Sammy Votnin is likely to be the sacrifice here. The good thing is Walsh, Cider, and Smith might just be ready to take the step up. So it would be Subban, Butcher, Severson. Unfortunately, we haven't seen much improvement from Carrick and Mueller. That is a really tough call in terms of who to go for. But that would be a very tough contract with Hall. But I think we I think we have the excuse to re-sign him now. We're at least winning. Like I said, as much as I want to save a little bit of money, and it would be a decent amount of money to save, you know what? I think we do is we'll sign him we'll sign him to the 8. We'll try to sign him to the 8. But obviously, if we have him and we're not winning, then yeah, we would we would trade him anyway. So, we're going to see what it will cost to lock up Taylor Hall. Nico Hisher, I still want to go for the full 8 just for obvious reasons. I get that he only wants the 6. Maybe we could say, "Hey, meet us in the middle. We'll go with 7." Which, you know, that might be what I'll do. Again, we have no strict rules in terms of re-signing or anything like that. But maybe we'll meet him in the middle with the 7. And we'll see if 6.5 over 7 works, which would be a steal of a deal. We will leave it there for now. We'll focus on the two main players that we want to come back. We're still listed as rebuilders. That has to be because of the goaltending situation. I mean, we have two guys, I think both of them still under a 78 overall. That doesn't help one bit. We beat Winnipeg 5-1, to one, though. Will we have answers? We do. Taylor Hall is back. Nico Hischer's back. So that was resolved quite quickly. Very quickly, in fact. And we beat Dallas 5-1. to one. So no real controversy there. Hall and Hischer are back, both on decent deals. As our winning streak comes to an end, a 7-2 loss to the LA Kings. But that is not a bad bit of business, and we are the top team in the Metro as we approach the All-Star break. The All-Star break? Well, yeah, I guess the All-Star break is, is true. <laughs> Trade deadline was more what I was thinking of, though. So in terms of expiring deals, let's get the Blackwood deal done. We're still going to bank on him being the starter. A two-year deal is what he's looking for, but you can already see money-wise, it's it's becoming a bit of a problem. We'll sign him to that two-year deal, and we'll drop that down to about 2.1. Hopefully he accepts that. There is a chance that we're going to have to either just accept the fact that Sammy Votnin's leaving for nothing, or we move him at the deadline. One or the other. Not sure which one it's going to be. Depends on just how good of a situation we're in. Blackwood signed before we even got to that game against Carolina. Although we will end up simming it. Back-to-back -back losses for the first time in a while. 
sees us down into second, but we do have two games at hand on Pittsburgh. So it's going to be a battle, a race to the finish here for the top spot in the Metro. So the good thing is, goaltending-wise, we're settled. How much money do we have heading into next year? 8.5. I think we have to commit and just accept that Sammy Votnin's leaving at the end of this season. Otherwise, it would be try to move on from Brat, but he's he's a key player for us, man. He's a key player for us. Quietly turned into one hell of a pickup for the Devils, and he's continued to turn into a, a very solid player. Yeah, we can't we can't get a cheap deal out of this. He wants a five year deal, which I'm okay with. We can drop that down to just a little bit a little bit under four six, so we'll go a little bit over. See if he accepts that. Wayne Simmons is definitely gone. A lot of these other guys, it's going to be close. Really close to see who stays and who goes. I think the key thing here is can we move Corey Schneider? Which would be great. Is there a team far off of the playoffs that could use a goaltender, but more importantly, assets. I mean, obviously, you know, Colorado, there's no trading a goaltender to them. They need to get Miko Rantanen back. Detroit, they have Howard, who they're looking to move. It would be ideal. How much longer? Oh, God, they just re-signed Bernier. Okay, I have an idea. Say we uh, we bring in Jimmy Howard as a rental, who's been terrible, just terrible. Maybe not, <laughs> because auto reorder would start him over Blackwood. There has to be a team here where it makes sense to try and deal them a certain Schneider. Edmonton, they do love themselves some rough goalie contracts. Mike Smith's been a little bit better. In terms of cap space, though, they are hurting. They are hurting in a big-time way to the point where they can't even afford it. They're that bad, but they can't even afford it. Montreal struggling. Nashville has been awful. Wow. 20 wins on the year for the Preds. And unfortunately, no real answer for us here in terms of who to go after. I just want a way to move Schneider. I mean, New York's been terrible. George up to an 80. It's just Yorkin's a 79. George F's extension that he has signed is about to kick in. So there's no real answer there. There might not be a good answer for a team that we can work out a deal with here. Unless we look at Ottawa. Unless we look at Ottawa. Now they do have Hogberg. But say... We take Decord just as a, a drop, right? Because they have all the cap space in the world. We give you Corey Schneider, which is a rough sell. But do we have prospects to add that can really make this worth it? We have the goaltenders. Now, in terms of goaltenders, do the Sens need young goaltending? I mean, they have Gustafson, and that's it. So we could... Sweeten the deal a little bit. I'm thinking of giving up both Russians here. <laughs> I gotta be honest. Who else do we have that we could give up to get them to take Corey Schneider? I mean, White's there, but I don't know about that one. Walsh is available. More at Cider and Smith, of course. And then forward-wise, what name would make sense? to try and sweeten the deal. Boakvist would be a really tough sell. Good old Fogamoo, as I've learned. The, 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 the Fogamoo, that's what it was, Fogamoo. We'll call him our prized cow, Fogamoo. No, we won't. <laughs> oh God, do we really have, aside from the goaltending, and like Walsh. Do we really have anybody? I need to get rid of the Schneider contract. Desperately. We have to sweeten the deal. 
I don't know if it would take a more insider to do it in a real life uh, viewpoint. But also, Ottawa's kind of dumb. And that's my one, like, hey, it's not overly realistic or overly unrealistic. Ottawa's dumb because they are. Say we give up Kokechkov. All right, we give up Kokechkov. They get a goalie prospect. We'll give up a defensive prospect as well. We'll give up, uh, God. I don't know if I want to give up more at Cider. That's, that's pretty rough. <laughs> but Walsh is looking pretty damn good. And I don't really want to give him up. But say we, uh, say we really sweeten this for Ottawa. Will this work out for us? And then forward-wise, I don't really know if there's anybody to kind of add here. Anderson, Nathan Bastian, Gignac. Let's, uh, and we'll add this dude who's not under contract. I don't know if this is going to work. But it would be nice if it did. I'm sure I'll have to retain salary. But for the, this is basically the, for the love of God, take Corey Schneider. We'll give you a goalie prospect, uh, a prospect in each position. Just take Corey Schneider. You have the cap space. Now, unfortunately, they're also at 50 contracts, but the good thing is it's one, it's one for one. So, if that goes through, I'm cool with it. I fully expect to have to retain salary. Yes, I, yes, I do. The whole retaining salary option really doesn't help because that's the point. We're trying to clear as much salary as we can. Hopefully teams in 20 are a little bit smarter on this front. I half salary on Schneider is better than is better than nothing. We'll keep going up in small increments. Come on Ottawa, you know you want to take this deal. I am keeping Riley Walsh now. <laughs> the further the price goes up in terms of retention, I will take Riley Walsh off the list. We'll go up to 35. How about that? Instead of five, oh god, instead of increments of five. 50% of the Schneider deal. But you get a goalie prospect and a forward prospect. And we'll just take back Joel Decord and see if that works. I hate you. Really? Come on, Ottawa. You're not that smart. You know you're not. What about a third round pick, too? Please? All right, I think I think we're probably gonna have to accept that Sammy Votnin's leaving because this this contract is an albatross that refuses to. Uh, it's just gonna weigh it's just gonna weigh us down. It refuses to be moved. So with Votnin, I mean we have eight point five. We could re-sign him, and then the Brat deal, of course, going through. We'll see what happens first and foremost. We'll see if Brad accepts. Hopefully he does. And we'll take it from there. But not being able to move that Schneider contract really sucks. Actually, you know what we'll do? We'll set up the trade block. And we'll see if by some miracle we are able to get this to go through. So we'll set it up in that way, which basically says, hey, Corey Schneider and draft picks. Please, for the love of God, somebody take our Corey Schneider and our draft picks. That would be great. And for once, literally, well, for once, I mean, literally, it's just going to be like, oh, here, you want to swap picks. It's, it's, or here, do you want to swap this player for picks? Those are the deals that I'm going to get because of this. But that's okay. If by some miracle we get an offer for Schneider, we'll take it. I am fully expecting it to not happen but you never you never know there could be a miracle today of all days there could be a miracle so we'll see if that goes through otherwise yeah sammy Votnin's probably gone if we can't move that contract so we'll see what happens we play the rangers here they are absolutely terrible brat has accepted i'm sure we're gonna lose no we didn't we won five to four Nikita Gusev is up to 92 points in 56 games. Good God, man. So, in terms of expiring deals, Vatanen, we have 4.5 available. Oh, God. And then you factor in John Hayden, Mueller, Senny. 
I, I just don't see how we have the money here. I want, I want to try like hell to keep him. Wayne Simmons, I love him, but he's definitely a rental, no doubt. Like we'll, we'll let him go at the end of the year. Is there anybody else that we can look to move? Because obviously that Hall contract is expensive, but it's mainly that Schneider deal that is just dragging us down. Andy Green's deal is up. Severson at 4 one's not bad. The Butcher contract isn't bad. And then forward-wise, I mean, the, the uh, Hall extension obviously kicks in. Is there anybody else here, though? Zajac would be a good option to move as well. Kyle Palmieri's on a pretty damn good deal, though. So it's either, I mean, if we move Zajac, that's going to hurt in terms of who we have at center right now. But goddamn, don't we have to move that contract? So let's let's leave it up to the trade block for a minute, at least until we get up to deadline day. But I would love to keep Sammy Vatnin. It's going to take us moving Schneider or Travis Ajak to do it, though. That is the only way it's going to happen because we need to make sure that we have a little bit of extra money left over once vatanen has gone. Otherwise, we're not going to have money for some of those other RFAs. So we have a little bit of time before the deadline, and we'll see what happens. And case in point, oh, here, Thomas Hickey for draft picks? No, it's not It's not what I want at all. We'll send this game against Colorado. Let's see what the result is. It is a 5 to nothing win. Beautifully done. We play the Leafs and sends. We are currently one point behind Pittsburgh with two games at hand. And it's a 5-1 win over the Leafs. We're 8-2 and two in our last 10. Can we get a win over the Sens? Yes, we can. So, beautifully done. We are two points clear of Pittsburgh with a game at hand atop the Metro Division. We're looking really good here. Heading into the deadline. First and the third for a second Zeit 7 short. See, again, uh, that's, those are the type of offers that I'm going to get. Jack Campbell for a third and a fifth. Wouldn't be that bad of a deal. If Corey Schneider was going the other way, somehow, some way. As we'll play the Lightning here. And I don't want Christian Follin for a third. Thank you very much. Another 5 1 win, this time over Tampa. We host the Canucks. Dakota Mermis and Binghamton gets hurt. And we lose for the first time in a while. That brings us to deadline day? Or no, it's a little bit later on. Where's the red dot? Matthew Pekka, don't want him. Thank you very much. Let's see. Deadline day is Thursday. So just before we play the Penguins. So we have one more game here before deadline day. We'll take a look around the league. Gusev's already broken the 100-point mark. <laughs> Let's take a look at what's gone down. Holy trades. So, the LA Kings have acquired Cody Eakin, a fourth and a sixth for Derek Forbort and a third. Ottawa's taken on the Sutter deal. I mean, really, it was a swap of the Sutter deal and the Zaitsev deal. So, Ottawa gets Sutter in a third. Vancouver gets Zaitsev a third and a seventh. Calgary gets Matt Robertson a second and a third for, a, or for two seconds and two other pieces. Edmonton gets Taylor Radish and Kyle Olson from Tampa for Sam Gagne. That's a steal. L.A. gets Tyler Ennis a fourth and a fifth for Tyler Toffoli. So L.A. and Ottawa making deals. And you have Carolina getting Dean Kukin for a third. Nemesnikov to Colorado for two seconds and Kevin Connaughton. So the Avs, rather than focusing on bringing back Rantanen, acquire Nemesnikov. Case in point about the A.I. not being all that smart at times. If not most of the time, I do not want to acquire Mike Green. Thank you very much. We do beat the Capitals, and that brings us to deadline day. We are in sole possession of first place in the Metro, but if we want to make sure that our defense doesn't take a massive hit next season, somebody's got to go. So we will try like hell to trade Corey Schneider. I would argue that Zajac is a little bit more useful to us than Schneider is. I just don't know where the hell we're going to send him. Not a clue, in fact. Ottawa still seems like the perfect place. And they already want to trade Tyler Toffoli, which is hilarious to me. In terms of cap, 
Like, just to check back through this again. St. Louis has no need for a goaltender. Do any of these teams have need for a goaltender? Anybody at all. Even one that you can just bury. It would be more so for a bad team. I mean, Arizona, for example. I mean, not that you need the goaltender, but you're still struggling a bit. I think their issue, though, is, again, they have... I'm sure they have contracts coming up that they have to worry about, and the cap could be a little bit of an issue. Yeah, they have to sign Clayton Keller. I would completely blow up their entire team if I dealt them Corey Schneider. Boston's too good. Colorado has their own troubles. Detroit, I mean, you got two million in space. You sign Jake Gardner and Shattenkirk, and you already want to trade them both. You need to sign Tyler Bertuzzi and Anthony Mantha at the end of this year so that you have just completely screwed up your team. You have completely screwed up your team. I'm going to let you wallow in that misery. Edmonton's battling for a playoff spot. Nashville. Again, I don't really think the issue for Nashville is like, oh yeah, hey, we need we need prospects. I mean, they're trying to win now. It's just not happening. Uh, they're going to be losing Granlund at the end of the year. Which is going to suck, but they're not losing any other key players. Aside. Well, Craig Smith is a decent enough player. So, I mean, Nashville is looking to sell off good players for pieces. I mean, I don't necessarily have a good player for you, but I do have pieces. The good thing is you don't have any big contracts to sign. You're looking to trade Pecorine. So let's, let, what, what do you say we do a little swap skis here? And uh, will you just accept this outright? Are you that dumb? You're not that dumb. You're not that dumb. I mean, hey, these two teams have made trades before. Who's to say we can't make another deal, right? So say, just per se, we were to give you Riley Walsh, who I think was involved in the Subban deal. What do you think about that? So it's, it's fair value, they just don't want to take on Corey Schneider's deal. We know it's going to take the whole 50% retention. We already know this. But we might be able to make it work just yet. Say we give up the Fajemu. The, the, the Moo. Say we, say we add the Moo. We'll give you two decent prospects. You take on Corey Schneider. Do us a favor here. It doesn't make much sense for it to be Nashville, but... I am desperate to get rid of this deal. And you know what? We'll, we'll be nice. We'll, we'll add in a nice, shiny third round pick. So two decent prospects and a third for you to take on the Schneider deal. Damn it. <laughs> There's, there is nobody that is going to take this contract. It's just not going to happen. It's just not going to happen. We'll try with Ottawa one more time. I would have to load up this trade so much. Yeah, no one's no one's going to take that deal. My only move might be to buy out Schneider and just try to deal with whatever contract we can afterwards. I think that's literally the only move that I can make. Like I said, I kind of want to keep Zajac because he's at least useful to us. Otherwise, we're looking at running Mike McLeod as a second-line center already. Which is a little bit scary. He hasn't done that much worse than Zajac, though. The problem is, I don't even know if we could get someone to take the Travis Zajac contract, but those two deals in particular are just absolute killers for us right now in terms of keeping Vatanen. But we'll see what we can do. Hopefully this works. I mean, obviously, Hanawa's not really going to have interest. I feel bad for Zajac, but... Yeah, I think it's going to take a Corey Schneider buyout. I don't think anyone's going to take him. I really don't think anyone's going to take Zajac. I think we're kind of stuck. So we will renegotiate certain contracts later on. In terms of cap space that we have right now, we do have about $5 million bucks to work with. So let's take a look at the roster, see if anyone's underperforming. And we might be able to make a move here, which would be... Fairly surprising. Goaltending-wise, Blackwood's the guy. Even though he's not getting it done necessarily this season, he's the guy. We're sticking with him. Defensively, uh, the Mueller and Carrick pairing's actually been decent. 
That would be the one spot I'd be looking to be like, yeah, we could bring in a rental. They haven't been bad, though. So why give up assets to get somebody who's better on paper when those two have actually done well? And defensively, or forward-wise, I mean, sure, another top six addition would be nice. Miles Woods slightly underperformed. A little bit of extra help for the top six could work. Again, Zajac hasn't been bad. Honestly, I think... I don't know if this team can win in the playoffs, but it is the type of team that might be able to win in the playoffs, which is how the sim works. Is it worth giving up assets to get somebody slightly better? I mean, that top line should be able to carry us. I think, you know I think we're just going to stick with it because I'm a little bit afraid to get rid of assets just in case we lose guys like Vatanen. So we're going to move on. We're going to leave this team as is. We lose to Pittsburgh, which sucks. It's a big point swing, but we're going to stick with it. In terms of trades, that Eakin Forbort deal was the last trade involved, so a pretty quiet deadline day. Or very quiet. Actually, there were literally no deals done. We will sim to the end of the season. Barring a brutal collapse, there will be a postseason appearance from the Devils in Season 2. It's just a matter of now what you know what this team looks like heading into next year, particularly on the defensive side of things, and whether or not there is an impending buyout of Travis Zajac and or Corey Schneider, and how certain guys develop. I mean, maybe. Ooh, four straight losses. Maybe had we given up someone like Moritz Sider, we might have been able to move one of those two contracts at the deadline. Obviously, with Zajac, we didn't really try that hard. As we have lost five games, make that six games in a row. I said barring a collapse. Well, guess what? There is a decent end-of-season collapse. We have bounced back with two wins. But this is going to be a pretty rocky road to the finish here. We play Anaheim with Matthew Kachuk. I wonder if he's the one who injured Damon Severson. <laughs> we end up getting a win there, though. Uh, Mueller goes down to injury, too. So not the right time for an injury bug, although we have won four in a row. We end up losing in overtime to the Sens. Five games left this year. A loss to St. Louis. A win against Detroit. That brings us to April 1st. We are on 46 wins. Impressively enough, but that is only good enough for second place in the division. We have clinched a playoff spot, though, so indeed there will be a postseason appearance. Nikita Kusev, 122 points, nearly 70 goals, but whether or not we're going to have home ice in the first round, whether or not we've won a division, comes down to these final few games. So we'll sim this game against Buffalo. We desperately need a win, and we get one that keeps us in second place in the division, but we are two points back of the Penguins with an even amount of games played. Hopefully, 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 the Hurricanes lose their next game, the game in hand that they have, before we play another playoff team, the Philadelphia Flyers. The Hurricanes did not lose that game. Pittsburgh managed to win, so we have to win out here to make sure we stay above the Canes. Can we beat the Flyers? Another, another playoff team, a fellow playoff team. We lose that game. We are still above the Canes for now. But we desperately need a win here against Tampa to make sure we have home ice in the first round. We lose that as well. So we need the Hurricanes to lose their final game of the season. Otherwise, they will have home ice advantage in our first round matchup. We know we're playing the Canes in the playoffs. And the Hurricanes jumped us. So we finish in third in the Metro on 100 points. But we will not have home ice advantage. We lose out at the end of the season. Gusev did hit 70 goals, which is insane. And obviously we'll take a look at stats across the board here in a second. I just want to make sure that everyone's on 82 games, and they are. So the final standings are in. Let's take a look around the league. We finished with 47 wins, as I said, but only third in the Metro. We'll be taking on the Hurricanes in our first postseason appearance. Philadelphia and Washington also made it. Columbus just missed out. And New York and the Rangers also, well, the Islanders and the Rangers, both New York teams in the Metro, fell short. Well, well short. In the Atlantic, it's Toronto, Boston, and Buffalo that make it. Tampa misses for the second year in a row. Who would have predicted that? 
Ottawa, Florida, Detroit, and Montreal all miss out by a decent margin. In the Central, Winnipeg wins it again. Chicago, Minnesota, St. Louis, and Dallas all make the playoffs. Brutal seasons for Colorado and Nashville. And in the Pacific, San Jose, Edmonton, and Vancouver make it. So Anaheim, Calgary, Arizona, LA, and Vegas. Another brutal season for the Golden Knights. They all miss out. So the Leafs and Bruins were tied for the top record in the league, or at least point totals. But the Leafs take it on tiebreaker, the ROW tiebreaker. Nashville, the only team in the league under 70 points. Absolutely brutal. In terms of offense, most goals for New Jersey. So we have the best offense in the league. Toronto up there, San Jose, Winnipeg, and Buffalo. Weakest offenses in Nashville, Vegas, Montreal, Anaheim, and Vancouver. The bottom five were the only five teams to finish with less than three goals for per game. The top defenses slash goaltending, at least in terms of goals against per game. Chicago, Minnesota, Carolina, Dallas, and Philadelphia. So we're up against a really good defensive team. The most goals allowed, Calgary, New York, Florida, New York, and Ottawa. So there you go. Quick look around the league. We will look at point totals before wrapping this episode up. It is playoff time in New Jersey already. And obviously, Goose Evan Hall absolutely killed it. Goose Evan hit 70, point, or 70 goals, 125 points. 116 for all, and 96 points. 71 assists for Nico Hischer. Palmieri had a good season. Brad had a good season. Mike McLeod had a pretty good season. Hit 20 goals and 51 points. Only 46 points for Zajac. Despite that cap hit, more useful to us, I'd think, than getting rid of him. Coleman on 33 points. Simmons on 33. Wood on 32. And some of the depth options were a little bit lacking. Just a little bit, but it wasn't that bad. Defensively, great season for PK. Good seasons for Butcher, Severson, and Vatanen. 18 points for Carrick now. The argument for Vatanen is, well, is it really worth paying, you know, four to five million bucks for a 27-point defenseman at 28 years old? And that's a decent argument, too, despite the fact that on paper we take a decent hit if we were to lose him. Goaltending-wise, Mackenzie Blackwood with a 9-10. It's not too bad. We're still going to trust him to continue to develop. Schneider was at least not horrific when he played. So we will take a look around the league, I guess, and we'll start off with forwards, of course. And drumroll please, Gusev led the league in points, Hall was in second from there. Gensel, Matthews, Malkin, the only five players to break 100 points. You had Shifley, Marner, Tavares, Wheeler up there as well, Skinner and Eichel, Pasternak up there as well, Marcus Johansson had a great season in Buffalo with 74 assists. McDavid, Getzloff, Marchand, Kachuk, 90 points for his first season in Anaheim. Even Ilya Kovalchuk had a decent season. Goals for, I mean, just, again, creative players can be so broken. But John Tavares, 59 goals, 54 for Skinner, 52 for Ovechkin, and McDavid, the only other player to hit 50. Malkin, Matthews were close at 49 and 48. In terms of assists, it's Marner, Hall, Gensel, Johansson, and Hischer. They all hit at least 71. And, of course, for points, you would have already seen it. So, not too bad in terms of power play points as well. 46 points on the power play for Jake Gensel. That is ridiculous. Top face-off man, Sasha Barkov. Although, in terms of, you know, face-off percentage and everything, we don't get to see. As Abanajad loves to hit, though. We know that, at least. Defensively. Let's take a look. Brent Burns <laughs> hit 94 points as a defenseman. That is the most I've seen. 24 of those points on the power play. Crazy. Latang with 75. Gostas Bear, Jones, Barry OEL. Some of the some of the names you'd expect to see up there. Doing quite well. Brandstrom did incredible. Jesus Christ, he's up to a 90 already. <laughs> Development in this game can be weird. Eric Brandstrom is the real deal for Ottawa. We know that at least. The goals, we know it's going to be Burns, and it was. The assists, also Burns, which is not surprising. Goaltending-wise, the winningest goaltender was Tuka Rask, although Murray has a better win percentage. The shutout king was actually Markstrom with eight. In terms of save percentage, Robin Leonard may have just won himself a Vezina. I mean, I can't imagine he wouldn't have. He appeared in 73 games, pretty sure. That's a Vesna. Not a single goalie over a 9.30, by the way. 
And in terms of the call to race, it is going to Jack Hughes in Buffalo. 74 points in his rookie year. Kako had a good season, 66 points, 63 for Brandstrom as a defenseman. It's going to go to Jack Hughes, though, unless there's a goaltender. And there is not. There very, very much is not. So Jack Hughes will be the Calder winner. We are done here for today. We will be back in the next episode. It is playoff time already for the Devils. No real struggles to get there. We'll be taking on... Well, we'll be taking on the old team, the Carolina Hurricanes, in the first round. And we'll see what version of this team shows up for us, but still our sights set on the future as far as what's going to happen this offseason. But it's Canes, Devils, Flyers, and the Penguins, the Battle of Philadelphia, Boston, Buffalo, Toronto, and Washington. In the West, Chicago, Minnesota, Winnipeg, Dallas, Edmonton, Vancouver, San Jose, and St. Louis. I will see you guys in the next one, playoff time for New Jersey against a team that was 8-1-1 in their last 10. Fun.